Good afternoon, everybody. You are about to watch the Palai Bible Church program, the moment of transformation. Today, by the grace of the Lord, we shall listen to our pastor, General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoyi. We are going to be blessed. It is my wish that you call your family to come and listen to you, as our pastor is blessing you with his holiness message. Amen. Bless. God bless you. We're looking at Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. The Lord has done great things for us. That's why the people of God are rejoicing. Obadiah chapter 1 verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. As we come to the deeper life camp here. You will see very clearly there welcome to the Mount of Transfiguration. For us, that is Mount Zion. And in this place, every time, with the support of the Almighty God upon our leaders over here, and with God working with them, every time you come here, there will be deliverance. Every time you show up here, there will be holiness. And the people of God in this land will possess their possessions in Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to talk to you briefly. After that, we're we'll still going to have prayer together. I'm talking on possessing and preserving your miracles. When God has blessed us, we need to retain what God has done. That miracle. Whether it's miracle of salvation, miracle of sanctification, miracle of healing, miracle of deliverance, miracle of extraordinary things. We must know to keep that thing. How to preserve it so that we will not be falling and rising. That's why we're looking at possessing and preserving your miracles. There are three things we're going to look at. Number one, connection. Connection. What brings miracles in our lives? It is connection. It's like there is electricity. But you see that switch on the wall. When you turn it on, there is a connection there. That brings light into the house. You see water. And then when you turn on the faucet, now then the water will bring will come out because there is a connection. You see all those children. How did the children come? Between the husband and the wife, there was connection. Connection is very important in life. If you are just isolated and you don't have connection with anybody, miracles will not come. Number one, connection. Number two, continuation. See, it is when we continue. Life comes to you when you are connected. And when you continue, the life will be getting better and better, richer and richer. Continuation. Continuation. You will continue. I said you will continue. Number three, conservation. Conservation. Many people don't conserve what they have. That's what they were rich many years ago. Today they 
poor. And he said, he was was strong many years ago, now they're weak. They were holy and righteous many years ago, but now they're sinful. Now they're concluding, and they were the mighty and powerful. They were mighty and powerful before. No, too many of them were the mighty but now they're weak and anemic. And they were top it the power. They did not conserve and preserve and retain and keep. What they are. Conservation. Number one. Connecting with the Lord's might. The might is a strength. The might is a power. Connecting with the Lord's might. Number two. Continuing in the Lord's message. Continuing in the Lord's message. Number three. Conserving the Lord's miracle. Conserving the Lord's miracle. Number one. Connecting with the Lord's might. How does miracle come? By connection. In Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Reading from verse 28. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Come unto me. Connect with me. Don't stay far away. Leave where you are. Come unto me. And when you come to me, there will be a connection. You are on earth. He came from heaven. It is the connection that brings heaven to earth. You are in darkness. He is in the light. It's your connection that will bring light into your Life. You are sick. He is a healer. It's a connection that will bring healing to your life. You are oppressed and afflicted. He is a deliverer. It is a connection that will bring deliverance to your life. You are a captive. You are in the prison. He is the liberator that sets us free. It is a connection that will bring freedom to your life. You are hungry. He has the bread of life. It's a connection that will bring bread of life into your life. You are a child of hell. He is the king of heaven. It's a connection that will take you to heaven. Like Jesus Christ told everybody, come unto me. Connect with me. Believe in me. In your mind, come out of darkness. In your heart, come out of that idol worship. In your mind, come out of that gang. Come out of that occultism. Come out of that traditional religion. Come out of a powerless kind of church going that doesn't bring you to Christ. Connect with Christ. Connect with Christ. Come unto me. All you that labor on a heavy lady. I will give you rest. You know what the people did? They came. They came. They came. The afflicted came. At the the came. The captives came. The demonized came. Adam All the feeble people came. The men came. The women came. When they came unto him, they were connected. That's why the Lord is telling you, if you, are, if you have not yet come, the Lord is saying, come. Come. Connect with me. I'll give you life. Connect Connect with me. I give you salvation. Connect with me. I give you power. Connect with me. I bring anointing upon you. In Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one. Mark chapter one. Mark seventeen. Mark one seventeen. Mark one seventeen. Look at what it says. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me. 
And I will make you to become the fishers of men. And straightway they left their nets and followed him. As Jesus told them, he's telling you. Immediately he told them. He didn't say what will Papa say, what will Mama say, what will my friend say. He said, This is my chance to make up my mind. This is my chance to voluntarily follow the Lord. And he followed after him. You will follow after him. I said, You will follow after him. Then blessing will come upon your life. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. You will see how all that's connected with Christ. And he's calling you to the same connection. Matthew 15 verse 22. Matthew all the woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. Came out of the same coast. Whatever region you are in, whatever province you came from, whatever locality you are living, here is the universal call of Jesus to everyone. And so when this woman heard of this invitation of the Lord, she came out of that coast. Now, if you put him by, cried unto him, saying, I must see on me, O Lord. I read it there with the Bible, son of David. David, my, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, money be every hammy battle, though, because she came. Look at the result in verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. They came. You will come. I said you will come. I said you will come. And the connection will bring a miracle in your life. After you come, there will be salvation. There will be eternal life. There will be joy. There will be victory in your life. You will supply all your needs. And then the next point now continuing in the Lord's message. Number one is to come. Thank God I came to Christ. Thank God I connected with Christ. Now continue. Now continue. Say I will continue. Say I will continue. Let me hear you. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 31. And verse 32. In verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples. You know, praise the Lord. I started coming here many years ago. And then here we are today. And then that's why by the grace of God, this is not my last time. I will come again. I said I will come again. I mean to come to this our land here. I will come in Jesus' name. When I come, will you be there? I said, will you be there? Because if you don't continue, if you don't continue, when I come, you will not be there. But it is the continuity. It is the going on and going on. It is saying, oh Lord, I am here today. And I don't mean to stop. 
And I want to continue with the Lord. It is that continuity with the Lord. It is that continuation with the Lord that makes the blessings of God to be permanent in our lives. That's why I say, in the strength of the Lord, by the grace of God, I will continue. I said, I will continue. And if you continue, and I continue, there is connection with the word of God. There is connection with the power of God. And there is connection with each other. Because it is not enough that congregation alone will continue. The preachers too must continue. The overseers too must continue. And the GS too must continue. And praise the Lord, I continue. I said, praise the Lord, I continue. And that miracle of God, the power of God, will continue in our lives in Jesus' name. In the word, in the word, in the word, continue ye in the word of the Lord. That's why Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. There is a difference between convert and disciple. A convert, yes, I'm converted. But to be a disciple is to be a learner. He's to say, I'm here now. I learned from the word of God. I learned from the Bible teaching. A disciple. You see something we wrote on our vehicles, on our on our buses. Discipling a whole nation. Not converting a whole nation only. We go beyond conversion to continuity. And it is the continuity that brings that discipleship. Look at that verse again that Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse 31. John 8 verse 31. And Jesus said unto them, And Jesus is saying unto you, I said, Jesus is saying unto you, If ye continue, if ye continue, that's by your own voluntary action. That you say, by the grace of God, there is a connection. I have come. And because I have come, it's not that I crawl in, I crawl out. But he says, I'm going to remain there in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of light, in the kingdom of his dear son. And then he says, if on the condition you continue, on the condition you continue, you continue in his word, you continue in his fellowship, you continue in his teaching, you continue in the life of the Christian, you continue in righteousness, you continue in holiness, you continue dwelling with him, abiding with him. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. Praise the Lord, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. And the truth shall make you free. That truth will make us free in Jesus' name. In John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 7 here. Continue in the world. Continue in his love. Continue in his power. Continue with his church. Continue with the people of God. John chapter 15 verse 7. Here it says, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. If you abide, if you dwell, if you live, if you remain, if you continue, it is the continuity in the watch of the Lord. You make up your mind. Temptations will come. Trials will come. Some people will try to beat you back. 
They try to scare you away. They try to say, no, this is your religion. Why are you going to another place? But you say, I saw the light there. I saw the goodness of God there. I had the truth that set me free there. And because of that truth that set me free, I'm going to abide. I'm going to dwell. I'm going to remain there. It is when you continue in that watch of the Lord. It's good to come to church. And it's good we come together like this. And as I said, we will do it again. I said we will do it again. But the best thing is when we obey what we're learning. The best thing is when we accept what we're hearing. And we continue in our houses. Anywhere we go, we're abiding in that world. We're living in that world. We're practicing that world. We're doers of the world. And then the blessings of the Lord will continue in every life in Jesus' name. And look at verse 8 here. Herein is my father glorified. That ye bear much fruit. And so shall ye be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Continue, continue, continue ye in my love. You see that word is there again. Continue. Continue. Romans chapter 11. Roman 42. We're looking at verse 22. Romans 11. Roman 42. We're reading from verse 22. And it's still the word continue. The Lord tells us over and over and over that the secret of growing in your miracle, the secret of abiding in your miracle, the secret of knowing that He's done something something and he'll continue to do it. Is that, Is that remaining? Is that keeping it? And continuing till the very end. And as I said before, that when we have another program here in Kumasi, by the grace of God, I will come again. And it is when you continue. And I continue. And your continuity and my continuity, they join together. It is two of us agreeing together. The pastor making up his mind, he will continue. And you members of the church making up your mind, you'll continue. It is when the continuation, continuity of you and I come together there will be an explosion of miracle an explosion of power it will happen I said it will happen in Romans chapter 11 reading from verse 22 Romans 11 verse 22 behold therefore the goodness and the severity of God which fell severity but toward the goodness. Now, why are you in his goodness? Sir. If thou continue in his goodness. That's why the Lord is telling us that the secret of power in our lives and the secret of maintaining the miracle power of God in our lives is to continue, to continue, to continue where we'll continue. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15 you see, you see how important it is to continue. For Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself only unto them. That the prophet he may appear unto all. Take heed unto thyself. And unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. The teaching of the word of God we're receiving. He says, take heed sometimes. Some neighbors will say, 
Why are you skipping to the word of God so strict? Other people have liberty to twist it and change it and modify it. But to say, no, I'm going to continue as it was given unto me. And it is that abiding in the world without changing anything, modifying anything, adulterating the word of God, diluting the word of God, not to say this is what I got and I'm going to continue like that it is that that multiplies the blessings of God upon our lives that's why it says take it to yourself at the time of temptation take it to yourself at the time of trial take it to yourself at the time when you are getting married take it to yourself at the time of the wedding ceremony take it to yourself when somebody has died and we're doing the funeral ceremony take it unto thyself and when papa or mama dies and then all the villagers will say this is how we do it and they want to bring in tradition take it unto yourself and to the doctrine and sometimes leaders change what I mean is a brother A, pastor A is here now another time pastor B welcome take it unto yourself that even when we change pastors and we move them around the doctrine does not change the lifestyle does not change and the understanding of the practice of the world does not change take it to ourselves and to the doctrine continue in them for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee will take it unto ourselves. We're going to continue the word of God. It is that continuation that makes the power of God to abide and rest and multiply in our lives and the blessings will multiply in Jesus' name. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 14. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Continuing in the Lord's message. Continue in the things which thou hast learned. And then it tells us and has been assured of. Now, knowing of whom thou hast learnt there. Number one, connect. Number two, continue. Number three, conserve. Concern. Keep it. We're going to keep it. I said we'll keep it. You and I will keep it in Jesus' name. Conserving the Lord's miracles. How do we how do we conserve the Lord's miracles? You see, there are many people, they get healed now. By the time you see them in two, three months, you say, what happened to you? And you say, I don't know. I got it at that time, but I don't know where it is now. I'm going to give you the key now. Everybody say the key. How do I keep my miracle? How do I preserve my miracle? How do I make sure that this miracle I've got now by the time we come back together again, that miracle will still be there. It will be there. I said it will be there. You see, what to keep the miracle? M I R A C L E S. Miracle. Everybody see miracles. M, that's your mouth. Mm, no, eh, why, why no? I, that's your instruction. R, that's for righteousness. A, that's anointing. C, that's commandment. L, that's the landmark. 
he that is example yes that's the standard to keep your miracles keep your mouth keep your mouth some people get something they lose it with their mouths i remember something he lost all the power he got through his mouth. I keep the instruction. Keep that instruction. R, keep his righteousness. A, keep the anointing. I'll keep the landmarks. You see, there are landmarks in the word of God. And the people who tamper with the landmarks in the word of God, they don't keep their possession. And the children of people, the children of God, the people of Israel, they will keep their possession. Possess their possession. Keep the landmarks in the territory of that possession. And then Jesus has shown us the example. You see that from the beginning of the life of Christ to the very end of the life of Christ, he kept his power. He kept, he kept his, his miracles. His miracles. He kept his dignity. He kept his attributes. He kept the favor of the Father. He kept everything is God. You keep his example. And let's lift up a standard. And it is when we keep the standard. That's why the miracle power of God is kept in our midst. Let's go over that one by one. M, what is M for? I said, what is M for? Tell me out loud. Keep your mouth. Keep your mouth. Keep your mouth. In Proverbs chapter 13, verse 3. Proverbs chapter 13, I'm looking at verse 3. This is why some people lose their miracles. This is why they lose their privilege. This is why they lose their promises. This is why they lose all the provision of the Lord for them. They don't keep their mouths. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 3. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. But he that openeth wide his leaves shall have destruction. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 23. Proverbs 21 verse 23. Here is what the word of the Lord is telling us. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Keep your mouth, keep your tongue. Because in that tongue has the power of life and death. That's why the Lord is saying, if you're going to keep your miracle, you will keep your mouth. You will not say, I don't know whether I've got it or not. You confess positively. Praise the Lord, I got my miracle. Praise the Lord, my miracle is still there. Praise the Lord, by his stripes I'm healed. Praise the Lord, I have the anointing that breaks the yoke. That keeps you strong all the time. The next word is keep his instruction. Keep is instruction. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 13. Proverbs 4 verse 13. It says in verse 13, take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her for she is thy life. The instruction the Lord is giving us after we're healed. The instruction the Lord is giving us after we're delivered. The instruction the Lord is giving us after he has given us salvation. John chapter 5 verse 14. In John chapter 5 verse 14. Instruction. 
the instruction of the Lord. If we go to keep our miracle, John 5 14. It tells us, it says, after what Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse sin come unto thee. Keep your mouth. Keep his instruction. Keep his righteousness. How can you have miracles without keeping righteousness? Don't let that R drop out in your miracle. The Lord favors the righteous. The Lord blesses the righteous. The Lord exalts the righteous. The Lord overloads and Lord gives him blessing every day when we remain righteous. Psalm 106, I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 106, we're looking at verse 3. 106, verse 3. Look at what the word of God is saying. It says, Blessed are they that keep judgment and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Doeth righteousness at all times. At home, righteousness. In the school, righteousness. College, university, righteousness. In the church, righteousness. Among the workers, righteousness. In the private, righteousness. In the public, righteousness. When you are alone, Righteousness. When you are with other people, righteousness. The blessing of the Lord, the miracle of the Lord, is with the people that keep the righteousness of the Lord. And then the anointing. There everybody say anointing. There's an anointing that breaks every yoke. And we say, Papa, I'm going to be that anointing must remain there all the time. That anointing must remain there all the time. We're told in Leviticus chapter 21, verse 12. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 12. Look at what he's saying about this anointing. In verse 12, neither shall he go out of the sanctuary nor profane the sanctuary of his. God for the crown of the anointing oil on of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. We do not allow the anointing of the Holy Ghost to depart from our lives. What makes some people lose the anointing of the Holy Ghost? What is it that today they are filled with the Holy Ghost and tomorrow they are so shallow and empty of the Holy Ghost? My anointing will remain. I said my anointing will remain. How about you? Say it for yourself. Tell me out loud. What makes people to lose the anointing of the Holy Ghost? And look at this in Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. How do people give the Holy Ghost? And when they grieve the Holy Ghost, the anointing gets away from their lives. Look at verse 31. Bitterness. Verse 31, bitterness. In verse 31, there's wrath. Verse 31, there's anger. There's clamor. There's evil speaking. That's why it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. You see people who are bitter, 
Somebody offended them, they'll never forgive, they'll never forget. What she did five years ago, ten years, I've not forgotten. You will lose the anointing and you lose the miracle. But you said, let all bitterness be taken away from you. All rows and argument and fuming, let that be taken away from you. All anger and clamor. Evil speaking. Gossip, but biting. So we be put away thing. from you with all malice. We in every room. And be ye kind one to another. Uh, tender, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. That's what will make the anointing to remain. Your anointing will remain in Jesus' name. See is for his commandment. You see, when you keep the commandment of the Lord, it is that that makes that miracle to remain in your life. Some people, they just say, okay, I've got my miracle. They do not know how to preserve that miracle. How to conserve that miracle. How to keep that miracle. As you are going home, your miracle will go with you. Anywhere you go, everywhere you go, your miracle will go with you. Jesus name keep his commandments keep his commandments Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 see what the Lord is saying the Lord is saying and he said if thou wilt Diligently hacking to the voice of the Lord thy God. Now what can I say? I will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear to his commandments. I will give ear to his commandments. I will give ear to his commandments. I keep on his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord. That he lets thee. We'll continue the commandments of the Lord. And when you love the Lord, the commandments of the Lord are not grievous. You enjoy, you delight in the commandments of the Lord. You say, He's my Savior, I love Him. It's my savior. I love his commandments. I want to do what pleases him because he has done a lot of good, good things for me. That makes his miracle part to continue your life. Keep his commandments. First John chapter 3 verse 22. First John chapter 3 verse 22. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments. Because we keep his commandments. And do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Now, L, keep the landmarks. Keep the landmarks. The landmarks. You see, if you have a possession of a piece of land, there are some points, some beacons that are placed at the territory, the perimeter of that land. And for you to keep that possession, now, all are, those landmarks, the marks on the land, those are landmarks, they must remain there, intact. And so when the Lord said, this is the heritage I've given unto you, you have landmarks right there. Anybody that comes to deeper life will know that there are landmarks. Even when we sing together, you see those landmarks in the song. Jesus only is a message. Stanza 2, Jesus only is a savior. Stanza 3, Jesus only is a sanctifier. Stanza 4, Jesus only is our healer. Stanza 5, Jesus only 
only is her power. Sansa 6, and for Jesus we are waiting. It's coming again. The salvation is there. The sanctification is there. The healing is there. The Holy Ghost baptism is there. And it's coming again. The rapture and the second coming, they are there. And then, as we learn in the workers' uh, congress, conference, and all the meetings we have, all those doctrines, those are the landmarks. And then, as we come to our church, you will see as we write it there, honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. Those are the landmarks. What makes the miracle power of the Lord to remain with us? As we remember those landmarks and we keep them honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints. We keep it in our hearts. We keep it in our head. We keep it in our hands. We keep it in our families. We keep it in our behavior. We keep it in the private and in the public. And that's why it is on. It is right there for everybody to see anytime you come to our church. Keeping the landmarks will help you to keep your miracle. You will keep the miracle. I said you will keep the miracle. In Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 28. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. Remove not the ancient landmarks which your fathers have said. When God called Abraham, he gave him the landmarks. All those landmarks of blessings he passed on to Isaac. Isaac did not remove any of the landmarks before passing it on to Jacob. When Jacob had all those 12 sons, he transferred every Everything unto them, everything was intact. And then Moses came and God gave it to Moses everything, all the landmarks. And then Joshua came and he said, Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. And he gave him the territory from here to there, from there to here, all the landmarks. And spiritually, Jesus. Jesus has given us the landmarks. All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And then he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he says, lo, I'm with you until the end of the world. Those are the landmarks that's given us. When you are sharing, All the teachings of the word of God. Until the very end. And I praise God when I come to the country Ghana here. I praise the Lord because we have kept it until this time. And we're going to keep on keeping it until the very end in Jesus name. As I told you before, I started coming here in 1978. Our two overseers here will remember. And when I came in 1978, I went to the mighty great crusade. And I think uh, both our pastors, Pastor John and Pastor Edward, they will remember we had all, you know, I, I came from Nigeria and then we wanted to follow up. We had about 750 people that were following up. I had followed up. And then I met with all the pastors that helped us at the crusade. And then they asked me, they said, what are you going to do here? Now crusade is over. I said, we're going to have deeper Christian life ministry. 
He said, what do you teach? And then I said, we teach virtually the Bible, the whole landmarks. And I said, this, 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 and this. And I said, oh, the pastors told me it is not possible. said, you can teach that in Nigeria. But in Ghana, you cannot teach all that here. I said, but that is the Bible. Oh, they said, if that's what you are going to do here in Ghana, good luck to you. We go our way, you go your way. And so they said bye-bye to me and I don't know whether I said bye-bye to them. <laughs> when I came the following month to do the follow up out of the 750 or so people only 30 people remained and then the few people that remained our two pastors here by the grace of God among them and they are still here today. And they continue. The grace of God that helped them to continue will help us. We will continue as well in Jesus' name. From that 30, only in Kumasi here, 30 at that time. That's how we came to Takoradi, came to you know, Cape Coast, and came to Tema, came to Accra, went everywhere. And now look Look at the church in Ghana. Why are you clapping as there's something in your hand? Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. And now I can tell you that the church in Ghana is as strong as the church in Nigeria. No. The choir, the choir is as beautiful as the, as the choir in Lagos. You know, I've gone to the youth, I've gone to the campus, I've gone to the children. I say, this is like Nigeria is here. <laughs> You know, I see, I see the dressing of the sisters. I see the dressing of, you know, all our mothers in the Lord. And every, I say, this is deeper life number one. <laughs> Number one. We will continue. I said we will continue. It is because our leaders who were before us, they continued. That's why we're enjoying it today. And this grace of God will never stop in our lives in Jesus' name. Look at Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24 verse 21. It says, my son, fear thou the Lord and the King. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Meddle not with them that are given to change. He follow his example, keep his example. We're looking at John chapter 13, verse 15. John chapter 13, verse 15. The example of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how to keep a miracle. That's how to keep the wonders and the signs he has given us. In John chapter 13, reading there from verse 15. He says in 13, 15 of John. Why are giving you an example that you should do as I have done unto you? And that's, that's why everything you do in your life, you ask yourself, what will Jesus do? 
the life we live, what will Jesus do? Yes, They say, why don't you smoke? What will Jesus do? We be saying, why don't you drink? What will Jesus do? They say, why don't you worship idol? What will Jesus do? They say, why don't you compromise with us? What will Jesus do? Life you live as a Christian, in the private and in the public. He follows after the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then when you say, I want to do like Jesus, live like Jesus, dress like Jesus, pray like Jesus, and please the Father like Jesus, the grace to do that, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Hey, I pray I will see me. Yes, I will say yes. Make us say yes. Men and say yes. Men so when you come pony say yes. So when you come pony now. I do my what do my yes. No, what do my mama will be with yes. Do you know? He is our Lord. Is our Master. Only a real genius. Every leader is happy when the followers are doing exactly like they. What do you be any just that you do for the next step? Pepe, pepe. You know there may be some bad examples isolated here and there. We must be with so much. Could be any idea. You are not say okay, brother son so can do it like this. I too, I will do it. No. Follow Jesus' example. If those people conducted their marriages like that, then maybe I can. No. You follow the example of Jesus. Whatever others do, others may, I cannot, I will not, I will follow the example of Jesus Christ. In 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 21. Peter chapter 2 verse 21. For ye what ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should, ye should follow his steps. Na ye no body frame on if you say Christian Suhuna Mani Mamo. Na wa jamu here so se muni na mo e chi. That's how to keep your miracle follow his steps. And he say we didn't know the example of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well yes, we have so is the example of holiness. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. It's the example of righteousness. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all this shall be added. Unto you. That means then when you live your life after the pattern, after the example, after the model of the Lord Jesus Christ, the miracle power of God will ever continue with you. Before I go to the last word, M is for what? M is for your mouth. I is for what? That's for the instruction. I is for what? That's righteousness. A is for what? The anointing. And C is for the commandments. L, the landmass. E, the example. S, the standard. S, the standard. As the standard. I want you to think about this now. In every society. You have received the message from our pastor, Pastor W. F. Kumoye, the general superintendent of the Palais Bible Church. It is my wish that as you listen, you will accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your hearts. And by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week, and the one we are going to listen to the next week, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. If you tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.